Hi, I'm Emil. I'm the CEO of Insoma. I'm very pleased to introduce the company to you today. Um, before I hit the first slide, we start with a fairly simple premise, which is that engineered cell therapy, either engineering a T cell or an hematopoietic stem cell, we've seen how curative that can be, but that the way that we do it today, that we're forced to do it today in an ex vivo paradigm, really won't serve the majority of patients. That's our thesis. We are an in vivo cellular engineering company. Um, we posit um, our, our ingenious platform combines first-in-class genome engineering tools with first-in-class delivery. We intend to combine that in a one-time, uh, single, simple outpatient procedure to durably engineer any cell of the hematopoietic system, and we think that will address the limitations today in cell therapy. Um, we have a great team and a great board, uh, tech ops is firing away, making clinical grade and scale product. And our goal is smart immune medicines in oncology and genetic disease. Our mission is one-time in vivo treatments that precisely engineer any cell of the hematopoietic system to cure diseases from within. That starts with our ingenious platform, which combines that first-in-class engineering and delivery tools. In engineering, we have class-leading base editors, both A and C base editors. We combine that with a high-efficiency transposase, and the combination of those two, the base editor allowing SNPs and point mutations, knockouts, and the transposase to introduce large cargo into the genome gives us the full breadth of capabilities that we think we need today. Um, so, and we believe we'll be able to enable next generation gene writer type capabilities as we go forward. That's based on, that's delivered by our um, ingenious delivery platform, which is a helper dependent adenovirus, virus like particle. We've stripped the entire genome. There is no virus genome left. And that gives us the full 35 KB packaging capacity, which we deliver to the nucleus of the target cell. Um, and we can engineer and we're continuing to screen for nootropisms. All of that, we hope, fits into a simple outpatient procedure where we can in vivo engineer with genomic medicines and we hope provide durable cures. So the paradigm is fairly straightforward. Um, we can engineer the peripheral blood cell and we'll show you data on this. And this would, you know, give you a kinetic profile that looks something like this. You get a high titer of that cell and over time it diminishes. And this, we can see this, for example, in our CAR T therapies today, um, where relapse is the problem. But we can also engineer the hematopoietic stem cell, and that gives you a different profile, where over time there's a latent phase where the hematopoietic cell, after it's engineered, begins to make the daughter cell. So if you make a CAR T, it appears over time. So we intend to combine those two approaches to durably engineer the hematopoietic system. And so if you step back for a second and say, what's, you know, what's the potential of that? Of, you know, you can imagine, it's fairly straightforward to imagine engineering any cell of the blood system, and there are lots of companies doing great work doing that. What we do in combination with that is the hematopoietic stem cell, and that gives you sort of programmability for the immune system uh, for the first time. A simple example of that would be the genetic medicine on the left, where we engineer in a copy of the globin gene, but we put it under regulatory control of a red blood cell locus, so that it's only expressed in the red cell. And then you get this sort of little cartoon here where the payload is only expressed there. Um, if that's all we do, which is pick the best cell and payload combination to cure disease, I think we'll make a really valuable contribution. Um, but the column on the right is the one that I think is wholly new, which is the idea of activating multiple cells of the immune system simultaneously. So in the example I give you here, we would make a CAR and K combined with a conditional monocyte, say a monocyte delivering a checkpoint inhibitor or an inflammatory cytokine. And that might give you new control over solid tumors, for example. So we think that approach of uh, activating multiple nodes is new and pretty disruptive. So in genetics, th the paradigm is fairly simple. Um, we have curative therapies for genetic disease. We've seen just, you know, the amazing advancements just this year. Uh, but unfortunately, those advances will probably at best treat 1% would be a good target. For example, in sickle cell disease, 1% of the total burden of disease worldwide. And that's because it's a really tough, it's a brutal paradigm for the patient. They live for months without an immune system. Um, and they have to be in a high intensity hospital setting in order to, to endure. The, the bone marrow transplant and the myoablation. 
We intend to simplify that with a one-time in vivo treatment targeting that hematopoietic stem cell where, in theory, it will be this simple approach. And um, we'll show you animal models where we can do this. In oncology, it's a little different. It's differentiated on a couple different axes. The first is it's in vivo, okay, which in itself eliminates all of the ex vivo paradigm that's been holding us back. The second is that we hope it will be durable because we combine that immediate engineering with the long-term durability. The third is that it's multicellular for the first time, I believe, uh, where we will turn on multiple cells of the immune system simultaneously. And the fourth is that it's combinatorial. And what I mean by this is we will not, we will not cure solid tumors with a single CAR-T. That would, that's my opinion, of course. This is complex disease with multiple layers of control. You have suppressive environment, suppressive cytokines, suppressive cells, and you need to peel back all those layers. It will be a combination therapy. The question is whether we develop individual elements and then partner them as individual companies, or we try to develop a single step combination therapy. That's our goal. So we have um, a lot of validation, all the benefit from our founders, Andre Lieber and Hans-Peter Kiem. Hans Peter is the current president of the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy. Um, they have published now for over 10 years on this system, um, both the efficacy, the safety, and the mechanism of action. And I'll just give you one, uh, so I'll show you a few examples here. It is safe. This helper-dependent adenoviral system, stripped of all the genome, is not yesterday's adenovirus. It is safe. We've now done, and I'll show you in monkeys. But this, this is an example of in the liver, no, effectively no response in the liver. Um, no response um, in, um, in, the, in the liver enzymes, and on, or very minimal. And on the right, systemic administration showing minimal or very small response, uh, in this case to IL-6, but you can measure pretty much every cytokine and see pretty much nothing in the monkey. We've now done 14 monkeys, and we're confident this is an acutely safe vector. It's a different paradigm than yesterday. Um, it engineers, so what we do is we mobilize the animal with FDA-approved reagents. What that does is pull the long-term hematopoietic stem cells into the periphery. And then immediately after that, we administer our vector. So if you look at what happens, immediately after that, we engineer about 50% of the circulating hematopoietic stem cells. They're now in the periphery. And then over time, the natural process for those to home back to the marrow, some percent of those end up back in the, in the marrow. And you end up with a chimeric animal or we eventually a patient. And this is an example. We engineer about, we can get up to now 7% with a single administration, non-toxic dose, large payload to that HSC. And we, we think that, by the way, is based on, uh, you know, the founder's technology, which in itself is, is fantastic, but we have improvements that we know are going to move that well up. If 7% isn't high enough, we've built in a selection cassette, an enrichment cassette, into that vector, and we can show you here in an animal driving that to 80 or 90%, um, and we can work that through. But what that allows you to do, in theory, is to tune the patient. You administer once, and then you have an outpatient procedure to tune the patient up to the chimerism that's needed. In, in oncology, you might only need 5% engineering. You, might, you would only want 5% of your T cells engineered. But in sickle cell disease, you probably need more like 25%. So hitting that appropriate therapeutic threshold is the, is the, is the, is the trick. Um, and we, these are durably engineered. On the left is durable engineering. This is an, a secondary engraftment in a mouse showing the long-term HSC. And on the right is, over time, the red blood cells from that secondary engraftment. We've done this many times. We know that we're engineering the long-term compartment. Um, and we can do now, when we insert this payload into the long-term HSC, on the left is, a, is just a research example where we've used a, condition, um, a non-specific promoter, PGK promoter, expressing GFP. So now every cell of the blood system that was from that parental cell HSC will be green. And you can see we mark every lineage. So in this case, you can see TB monocyte. So we can, if you want, mark all. But you know, the question is, can you mark one or selectively mark what you want? And on the right is that example. In this case, we've put in a payload. In this case, it's the gamma globin gene because we're targeting hemoglobinopathies. But we've put in a 25 kb promoter to regulate that payload. It's the native promoter, the full-length native promoter. And what you get is full-length native expression of that transgene 
Um, and that's what you see here. It's only expressed in the red cell. It's not expressed off target. So it gives you, we can show you that we can turn on one or more nodes independently. And we've now got further data than this. Um, here's four <laughs> published examples, curative results in animals. And I just show them quickly. On the top left, delivering sleep, Sleeping Beauty transposes uh, for curative effect. On the top right, delivering base editors to cure the mouse. On the bottom left, a combination of CRISPR-Cas and transposes where the vector has multiple components curing. And on the bottom right is a poster at the American Society of Gene and Cell Therapy um, with our founders, Andre and Hans-Peter and David Liu, delivering the coolest new base editor and flipping the pathogenic base in sickle disease and only that base. Um, all four curative examples in animals. We can show that we can now do this in oncology, for example, on the left, in vivo engineering, peripheral T and NK cells, you can see targeting three, four percent there um, of the T and NK cells, and on the right, those cells after introduction of a car construct killing the target cell. Um, and the basic premise is that, as I said, in oncology and autoimmunity and complex polygenic disease, you need a medicine that will address that complexity. That's what we think we can do with multiplexing, the, the possibility of many cells engineered with many different payloads to address complex disease. And on the right, it's about the ability to provide a simple outpatient procedure to fix a broken gene, which we think will make genomic medicine much more accessible. We have a great board uh, founded about two years ago, F Prime and, uh, and, and 5AM as the lead investor. Um, great board you can see here. We have a five target deal with Takeda that's in, in rare disease where we have two targets underway right now and progressing. It's pretty exciting. Um, and a team that I think I'm very proud to manage. It's a great team of people. Uh, people like Rob, I think maybe you caught his panel earlier today. He's about to get his third drug approved from inception. Um, that's pretty rare to even get one. I can go through, but it's just, it's a great team. Tony was the head of platform at Intellia. Patrick with his combination of FDA and Spark. Uh, it's a great group of people. And, you know, we, we think we've enabled something exciting and new here, a platform that enables the full spectrum of edits, um, that solves the delivery challenge. If it can be delivered as a DNA, if it's a DNA, we can deliver it, is the way we see it. Um, and it, you know, allows in vivo engineering of the immune system. We think it's a very big opportunity, this idea of um, in vivo engineering of the hematopoietic system for oncology, autoimmune disease, and genetic disease. And um, we are open to partnerships outside of our core area. Um, and we believe we've positioned well now with a good team, tech ops, management, um, and partnership with Takeda. And uh, we're, we're looking forward to the future. So thank you for listening. Happy to take any questions.